I'm pleased to present Dr. Sarah Sammons, who will share her knowledge on breast cancer and immunotherapy. Dr. Sammons is the Associate Director of the Metastatic Breast Cancer Program at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. She is a medical oncologist and researcher who focuses on improving the outcomes of people combating this top diagnosed cancer among women. We thank Dr. Sammons for her work and welcome her to the summit. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Sarah Sammons and I am a breast oncologist at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm so honored and thrilled to be here to talk to you all today about the advancements that we have made in both early and advanced stage breast cancer, particularly with a focus on immunotherapy. We have made incredible strides in the treatment of breast cancer over the last decade. Um, we've made great strides across all subtypes of breast cancer as well. When we're thinking about the different subtypes of breast cancer, we have hormone-driven or estrogen-driven breast cancers, HER2-driven breast cancers, and breast cancers that are not driven by HER2 or estrogen, and those are called triple-negative breast cancers. All of these subtypes have different challenges, but I think it's really important to note that we've made progress in terms of curing and treating all of these different subtypes. Um, we've made strides in terms of early detection of all of these types of breast cancers. It's very important to get mammograms so that we can diagnose these diseases early because an earlier stage diagnosis is always better. However, there are challenges still that remain. We know that incidence of breast cancer is increasing in, in very young women who are often not screened, and we still need to work on that. We also still need to work on identifying better therapies so that we can cure more patients um, with breast cancer. Um, and then another challenge that we are always working on is the side effects of these cancer therapies and the immunotherapies and how we can make an impact there. Immunotherapy has really revolutionized the treatment of all cancers in the last decade, and it definitely has a role and a space in some types of breast cancers. What immunotherapy is, is there are cancer therapies that usually put the brakes on the immune system so that the immune system can then work, usually with chemotherapy, to attack the cancer cells and kill them. Um, immunotherapy is approved in triple negative breast cancer. So those breast cancers that do not have estrogen or HER2 expression. Um, immune checkpoint inhibitors such as pembrolizumab or Keytruda are approved in stage two and stage three triple negative breast cancer to be given with chemotherapy but it's very important to notice that these immunotherapies given with chemotherapy work best and really work only when they're given to patients before surgery. So a lot of people are diagnosed with breast cancer and they say, I want this thing out of me, get me to surgery. But what is so important is if you have stage two or stage three triple negative breast cancer, so a tumor over two centimeters or a node positive tumor that's triple negative, Doing chemotherapy and immunotherapy before surgery is going to um, give you the best chance of cure and is, is recommended. And so pembrolizumab given with about five months of chemotherapy before surgery for stage two and stage three triple negative breast cancer has improved cure rates and has improved something called a pathologic complete response, which is when we give you the treatment before surgery and all of the cancer cells go away. We know when all of the cancer cells go away at the time of surgery, that those patients have about a 93 to 94% chance of being cured of their cancer. And we want patients to be in that bucket, of course. So for stage two or stage two triple negative breast cancer, we're giving chemotherapy with immunotherapy for about five months before surgery. Then patients go to surgery and they continue immunotherapy right now after surgery for another nine treatments. And for triple negative disease, this has led to the best cure rates that we've ever seen. 
Now we are still trying to figure out the major challenges for that we're still trying to figure out are which patients really need that immunotherapy and benefit from it. Right now we're giving it to everyone that qualifies, but probably everyone doesn't need it. And developing biomarkers to help us understand which patients are really deriving the most benefit would be helpful because immunotherapy can have side effects, which is challenge number two. When you put the brakes on the immune system, that sometimes leads the immune system to um, attack other parts of your body, which sounds really scary, but we can manage most of it in the clinic very, very well. Um, so sometimes we see things like rash, um, diarrhea, elevations in the liver enzymes. Um, we do check your thyroid to, to see if it's impacting your thyroid. Um, we have ways to manage all of these side effects, but they are a challenge um, and something that you should talk to your doctor about. In the advanced or metastatic setting, which means that patients have breast cancer that has spread to other parts of the body, like liver, lung, bone, or brain, for triple negative breast cancer, we also have immunotherapy approved in the first line setting, so as the first line treatment. Um, and so in the metastatic or advanced setting, we give immunotherapy in the first line, but only in patients whose tumors express a protein on their surface called PDL1. So if you have newly metastatic or advanced triple negative breast cancer, you want to make sure that your doctor tests your tumor for a protein called PDL1 to see if you could qualify for immunotherapy. About 40 to 50% of patients will qualify. But the good news is we have new strategies in clinical trials that look very promising in the metastatic and the early stage setting. In the metastatic setting, we're adding immunotherapy to very targeted chemotherapies called antibody drug conjugates, like Tridelvi and inher And the immunotherapy appears to, in early stage trials, work very well with these antibody drug conjugates and are in phase three trials in both PDL1 positive and PDL1 negative tumors. I think that um, the way we make progress in breast cancer is we can make progress in a lot of different ways. Number one, we want to cure as many patients as we can who have early stage breast cancer. When patients have metastatic or advanced breast cancer, we want to control those patients' disease for as long as possible and prolong their life for as long as possible. In triple negative breast cancer, immunotherapy is, hoping achieve, is helping achieve both of those goals. But the only way that we can develop more and effective therapies is through clinical trials. Clinical trials are incredibly important. They are the mechanism that we get every new drug approved in breast cancer and all other cancers. Clinical trials are where we first study new drugs to see if they're better than standards of care. And clinical trials are also how we determine if adding a drug or a new drug is better at curing breast cancer or prolonging progression of breast cancer compared to the standard of care in the clinic. So clinical trials are the only way that we will do better. and. Some people worry in clinical trials that, well, I don't want to get a placebo. A placebo is like a sugar pill. In, in all cancer, really, the control arm of a clinical trial, there's usually two arms. Sometimes there's three, but there's usually two arms. One of the arms, you get the best treatment that you could have off of the clinical trial, which is called the control arm. And then in the other arm, is the experimental um, drug, which we hope is better and improves upon the previous standard of care. And in doing clinical trials, that's how we see if we can improve treatments. And that's how we also get the government and insurance to approve these treatments, because not only do they need to see that it's better than the standard of care in a large clinical trial, we also need to make sure that it's safe. And so in clinical trials, we are studying not only efficacy, so how well it works to treat the cancer compared to standard of care, 
but we're also measuring safety to make sure that it's safe in a highly regulated setting. I can't tell you enough how important clinical trials are. Clinical trials are how every chemotherapy, every immunotherapy has been approved. Um, and we won't do better unless patients get on clinical trials. If you're interested in a clinical trial, you can ask your doctor. Many community centers have clinical trials now. Most academic centers have clinical trials, but the first step would be to talk to your doctor about how you could potentially participate in a clinical trial. What's next in terms of immunotherapy for our patients? Right now, immunotherapy is only approved in early stage and triple negative breast cancer and advanced PDL1 positive triple negative breast cancer. And the only immunotherapy that's approved are immune checkpoint inhibitors added to chemotherapy. Immune checkpoint inhibitors are being added to a lot of different drugs like antibody drug conjugates that look very promising. So I'm very excited about that. Also, we have a recent press release that's showing that a certain subgroup of patients with early stage hormone receptor positive or two negative breast cancer may benefit from immunotherapy. We're going to see this data in the next couple of weeks, and hopefully I can give you an update again next year, but I'm very hopeful that patients with high grade, so fast growing hormone receptor positive breast cancer may have an opportunity to get immunotherapy in the future, but this is very new, hasn't been presented yet, and is on the horizon. Also looking at other types of combinations with immune checkpoint inhibitors, and also looking at other strategies, other types of immune checkpoint inhibitors other than targeting PD-1 or PD-L1. There are some CAR T trials. Um, there are some vaccine trials. We really just, we will never know if something works until we try. And so the more things that we can try, the more hope that we have. And I definitely think there is a lot of hope on the horizon for any patient with breast cancer um, in 2023. Thank you so much for having me today and best wishes to everyone listening.